Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make the incredibly delicious pantry pasta that I make for myself when I'm completely out of fresh food. It's called pasta vodka. It's super easy to make and it only requires you to have one fresh ingredient on hand. But I'll also show you how to make it without that fresh ingredient by subbing in something that you've probably got in your pantry right now. To get started, I'll drop a large pot of water on the stove and bring it up to a boil for my pasta. I'll also preheat a heavy bottom pot over medium heat. That's gonna cook my vodka sauce. While those preheat, I'll quickly bust out the knife work for this recipe. For that, I'll grab three to four large shallots and five to six large cloves of garlic. For the shallots, feel free to use red onion instead. Just make sure to mince them as finely as I am here. Three to four shallots should yield me about 75 grams. For the garlic, I'm just gonna take five to six cloves and smush them through my garlic press. No shame in that, but if you wanna go the old fashioned way, feel free to use a knife or grate it with a microplane. In total, I need 20 grams. The last aromatic that I'm gonna use in my flavor base here is Calabrian chili. If you haven't had them, they're essentially cured red chilies from Southern Italy that come packed in olive oil. They're intensely fruity and pungent and are one of my favorite ingredients ingredients of all time. In my opinion, these chilies elevate this dish from a one note pink Alfredo sauce into something that's more vibrant, memorable, and fully perfumed with the sun-baked intensity of Southern Italy. Once I've got my aromatics ready to rip, I'm gonna head over to the stove where my heavy bottom pot has been well warmed over medium heat. In goes 40 grams of olive oil, or about a quarter cup's worth. Then I'll add in all of my shallots, my garlic, and then a strong pinch of salt. From there, I'll jump in with a wooden spoon and give these two a quick stir to get them cooking. The move here is to sweat these down for one to two minutes to open up their flavor and soften them a little bit so they don't stand out texturally in the final sauce. Once we're on the edge of translucent, but there's no caramelization happening yet, I'll go ahead and add two to three grams of chili flakes and then 30 to 40 grams of chopped Calabrian chilies. I'll hop in again and give it a stir to get those bloomed out in the oil. And I'll mention that this amount of chili flake and Calabrians makes this dish like a seven out of 10 spicy, but I'm also like a milk drinking gringo when it comes to spicy food, so throttle it based on how tough you think you are. After about a whole minute of frying, this oil is perfumed with fruity chili flavor and turning orange like this. So next in goes one whole BB can of tomato paste, or about 170 grams. The tomato paste is the main workhorse in my pantry, basically, because it's shelf stable for years at a time. It's super versatile and flavor-wise, gram for gram, it's as intense as anything else in my pantry. Dried chilies include Included. The one caveat here is that it tends to taste a little bit tinny when used straight up out of the can. So to curb that, I like to fry it off in a little bit of oil along with the aromatics. I'll give it about two minutes of cooking there, stirring pretty frequently, but keep a close eye on things because we don't want the garlic to burn or any of the sugar in the tomato paste to over caramelize. Once it's good and rust colored like this, I know it's fried, so I'll move on. Next, in goes the namesake of this dish, vodka two small airplane sized bottles to be exact, or about a third to half of a cup. I'll jump in and deglaze any tomato product that might be gripping the bottom of the pot and answer the question I know you're wondering right now. Hey Bri, why vodka? Well, according to Food Jedi, Harold McGee in his very famous book on food and cooking, the alcohol itself provides a third kind of liquid in addition to water and oil into which flavor and color can be extracted and dissolved, as well as reactive molecules that can be combined with other substances to generate new aromas and a greater depth of flavor. Basically, vodka unlocks aromatic flavors and fruity esters that bring some higher levels of harmony and intensity to this dish. If you don't keep vodka on hand, white wine would also work, but it'll be less effective at the whole flavor extraction part. And if you don't drink it all, water will be a totally fine sub, but you'll lose a few percentage points of flavor. Now, I'll give the vodka a minute or so to evaporate and cook off, and once the sauce is back to a pasty texture that's about to start glazing up the bottom of the pot, it's time to add in our cream. So, in goes 350 grams of heavy cream. In my my opinion, this cream is the only perishable item in this entire dish. Yes, there's shallots and garlic and there will be aged cheese, but I always have those on hand and they take months to go bad. So those are pantry items and not perishable. If you don't have heavy cream in your fridge, the 100% shelf stable option would be to sub in evaporated milk. I always tend to keep a few cans of evap on hand for either last minute mac and cheese or queso dip or now vodka sauce. It lacks a little bit of the fat content that cream has, but I'll get into how you can mitigate that later on. For now, I'll turn the heat down on the stove to its lowest setting and then add in two to four ounces of pasta water to make sure this sauce doesn't over reduce and split while I'm cooking my pasta. Theoretically, the tomato paste does have the acidity to do that to the cream, but you'd have to cook out pretty much all of the water first, which would take a while. On the other side of this range, my pasta water is up to a spirited simmer. So now I'll add in two very generous pinches of salt and then one whole box or a pound's worth of fusilli. I tend to use fusilli for pasta vodka because it just grips the sauce so perfectly 
perfectly. The ridges provide all kinds of little nooks and crannies to trap this relatively thick and creamy sauce, and I think it's a great fit. A lot of other people use penne or rigatoni, and I just don't think those grip the sauce nearly as well. But in the spirit of this dish, use whatever pasta you guys have in the pantry, even spaghetti. Now I'll jump back in with some tongs to agitate this pasta so it doesn't get all stuck together. Then to get this fusilli into a nice chew some al dente, I'll cook it for nine minutes and then take a second to thank ButcherBox for sponsoring this video. Lauren and I have been keeping our freezer stocked with ButcherBox meats for going on two years now because B-Box, as I like to call it, is a really convenient source for high quality, delicious, humanely raised meat. That includes 100% grass-fed beef, wild-caught seafood, crate-free pork, and free-range poultry, all of which gets delivered right to our door. And Speaking of poultry, Thanksgiving is just a few weeks away here now in America, and while I'm not going to be hosting personally, I have been nominated to bring the bird, which I've already added to my next butcher box. I used a butcher box turkey last year, and it was a huge hit. Not only does it taste a lot better than commodity turkey, it's also free range, all natural, and raised without antibiotics, so you can feel good feeding it to your family. And this year, you can get one of those turkeys for yourself for free, because right now, butcher box is offering new members one 10 to 14 pound turkey for free in the first box. So to get the deal, click the link in my description below and sign up for ButcherBox by November 13th. Just choose one of their curated or custom plans and the size of your box and you'll get a free turkey with your first delivery. The link is in my description below. Thank you, ButcherBox. Nine minutes later, I'll come back and check my pasta for doneness. These few sillies will need to cook a little bit more in the sauce. So at this point, I am looking for the soft bite of a perfect al dente. And that's right where I want it. But before I drain this off, I'll reserve one to two cups of this starchy cooking liquid to help adjust the sauciness of the final dish. Next, over at the sink, I'll drain this pasta through a fine mesh strainer or a colander, and then I'll check back on my vodka sauce. It's been simmering over here over very low heat for about nine to 10 minutes, and it's reduced a little bit, and the aromatics inside are fully softened and integrated. So in goes my cooked pasta, then I'll add in four large pads of butter, or about 75 grams worth, five tablespoons. Then I'll add in about a half a cup of my reserved starchy pasta water, and from there I'll jump in with a wooden spoon and stir to get this butter melted into the sauce. As I stir, more starch is going to come off the cooked pasta, and when you combine pasta starch and slowly melted butter, you get a very, very creamy, luxurious result. Don't stir too hard, though, because we don't want to break down the noodles. And by the way, this pot is still over very low heat. Once the butter is melted in and the sauce is looking shiny like this, I'll add in another half cup of pasta water and then about 50 to 75 grams of grated Parmesan cheese. Now, off heat, I'll stir all this to combine and mention that if you didn't use cream and went the evaporated milk route, I'd say add an additional 25 to 30% of both butter and Parmesan to compensate for the lower fat percentage. Once the cheese has been slowly melted in, we can take a look at the final texture to decide if we need to add more water to thin it out or more cheese or butter to thicken it up. This is gripping the noodles perfectly in my opinion, so I'll call it done. But of course, I still need to taste it for salt. The Parmesan did a lot of the heavy lifting here, but I think this still needs a little bit more. So I'll add in a little sprinkle or duh, and then taste it again. Wow. That's so sick, you guys. Now, to finish this pasta, I'll move it over to a beautiful handmade plate from Internet Shaquille's new pottery business, Barkley. Not sponsored, but it is dope. Look at it. Link in description if you're interested. Then, to garnish this, I'll hit it with a very generous dose of freshly grated aged Parmesan cheese, then a few dozen cranks of fresh cracked black pepper, some chili flakes to drive home the vibe of the spice, a touch of fresh basil for some herbal aroma and prettiness, and then finally a good long squeezer of some green tasting olive oil to add some superfluous fat. And that's my favorite pantry pasta dish of all time, you guys. Pasta vodka. It's creamy, spicy, fruity, cheesy, and has just a little bit of squish from the fusilli. It's easy to make, it feeds four adults, and you probably have everything you need to make it in your house right now. Let me know in the comments what your go-to pantry pasta is. I got to know. I really hope you guys make mine sometime soon. As always, let's eat this thing.